and uh, answer some of your questions. So uh, one of the questions um, from the very top here was about uh, some weight gain and whether uh, having a saggy neck is a contraindication to having face of surgery. In reality, it isn't a uh, contraindication to having face of surgery. And so one of the things that we look at is we make a goal, right? So if you can lose weight prior to face of surgery, then we recommend losing the weight. If you cannot lose the weight prior to face of surgery, then we can go ahead and and do a more extensive neck lift operation whereby we're going to be sculpting the neck significantly and in sculpting the neck we're going to be able to uh, remove much of the fat in the neck and then once we remove the fat we're going to have to tie the platysmal muscles that cause the neck bands in addition with the jowling one of the things that i do is i'm very i uh, am very forthright about make sure these jowls get uh, get tied back to giving you a small, uh, a tighter jawline and a more straight jawline, and then taking the jowls and bringing it forward. So one of the things, uh, if I can pull up my website, uh, one of the things that we can do is uh, is pull up the website and show you some of these results. Um, and so, uh, and you can see on my website that some patients have heavier necks, some people have less heavy necks, but we can improve most patients necks as a result. So thank you so much for that question. So other questions that people might have that really has to do with um, how, what is a realistic expectation in getting a firmer neckline? Uh, I think a realistic expectation would be that we can make improvement in the jawline, we can make improvement in the jowls, we can make improvement in the mid face. So I think that's very important. Um, all right, question from Jessica. Uh, asked a question that she's noticed that on the right side of her nasal passage, it seems to be collapsing. Would it be better for it to go to an ENT first, or is that something that can be diagnosed and treated? So uh, collapsing nose is something we see often, and um, uh, ENT surgeons are very good at alleviating nasal obstruction. Uh, I did my residency in ENT and practiced general ENT for a few years and I subspecialize in facial plastic surgery. A lot of times it takes a combination of both um, uh, a rhinoplasty, which may be structural to improve your nasal breathing and also change the aesthetic look of your nose, as well as improving the inside structure of your nose, like improving the deviated septum. So when patients have a collapsing nose, it's because the outside cartilages may be weak. And so we do cartilage support uh, using the same cartilage that we use from inside the septum with the septoplasty. So think about uh, a, a nose that's collapsing as the frame of the house is, is weak, and so we add structure by putting uh, cartilage there to help the patients breathe better. There's a nasal implant called the lateral nasal implant that can also be considered for a collapsing nose, and that's something we can discuss um, in the, in, during the time that we do a consultation. So uh, you're welcome for, uh, thank you very much for, for that question and, and you're welcome. Thanks, Tammy, for that question. Uh, other questions that we may, um, that, uh, that would be good to discuss, please go ahead and, and post, but I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen a little bit with you in regards to some of the things that, uh, that we're noticing. Um, uh, in regards to some of the facial aging issues that we're seeing over the summer, and that is patients often um, present with some skin texture concerns, right? And so I'm going to show you some of this, some of these issues here. Are you able to see my gallery? Are you able to see my gallery uh, on the website now? Right. Let me see if I can share that with you. So there we go. And let's go to, are you able to see the gallery now? Let's see here. Sorry for the business here. Add to stream. Yes. There we go. You can see the gallery. Yes. Can you see this? Yes. Okay, great. We're able to see the gallery. So these are just some patients 
that have had laser resurfacing with me. The patient in case number one had a combination of fillers as well as, um, as uh, CO2 laser resurfacing. The CO2 laser is a very strong face, uh, very strong laser. What it does for you is helps to improve some of the freckling, some of the dyschromias, we call that, which is the uh, other brown spots and the wrinkles. You can see here that uh, much of that has gone away, which is a CO2 laser. We also did some fillers for underneath their eyes. And so the fillers underneath their eyes really help to rejuvenate the eyes. You can see the sunken lower eyelid appearance. Uh, and that was filled in with, with filler. You can see here that these smile lines, these static sm smile lines, which are pretty prominent, are improved with a laser. And so these are things that can be improved, which is laser skin resurfacing. Other patients come in and, um, and they don't need as powerful of a laser. They just need improvement in the results of, of, the, uh, of the summer. So the darkness around the face, uh, additional brown spots, we call those dyschromias. And so we can use a photofractional laser, which is non-ablative, so it's like a lunchtime laser to take away some of the uh, uh, bronzing that you get from the summer to bring back some color in the face. Uh, and so this is a much more gentle laser. You can see here that the cheek, all these brown spots and, the, and, and this, this chromia, this pigment has been improved. This type of laser, which is an erbium gla glass laser called the Resurfix, is something that can be done uh, once a month and uh, it does not have the downtime that the CO2 laser has. So we call this a non-ablative laser. You can see improvement in the skin texture and the pigment using this, using this laser. So we have different lasers. Some of them are ablative, which means it removes the skin. Some of them are non-ablative, which means it treats pigment as well as wrinkles. And so you can see here that this laser, which is a non-ablative laser, is being used to improve pigment and skin wrinkles. Um, and so, it's a great laser for some patients who don't want downtime. And it's also a safe laser. Other patients have really heavy, a heavy face. And so they need a combination of treatments. In this patient, we did a facelift surgery uh, as well as laser resurfacing to improve some of these heavy wrinkles around the mouth uh, and to also improve the neckline with the facelift. And so we can do a combination uh, in some patients, especially with some heavy, heavy faces. Other patients like this patient here underwent a combination of facelift surgery as well as CO2 laser resurfacing. The facelift surgery was for the jowls here uh, as well as uh, improving the neckline. Uh, so we performed a combination neck lift on this patient uh, to, to help give her a straighter jawline and improve more of that turkey neck look or this really excessive saggy skin. The incision of this, I think there was a question earlier, is like, where is the incision? Uh, can I wear my hair up after a facelift? And you can see in this patient, she is uh, three months out from surgery and the incision is really hidden in the hair and hidden around the ear. And so it's a very natural type of facelift. You can wear your hair in a ponytail and then you could do uh, a combination of an ablative laser, like a, a CO2 laser, to improve the texture of the skin. So the goal is to improve the jawline, improve the neck, and to improve the wrinkles of the face without having much uh, scarring at all. So whether you're the type of person who is longing for a facelift or the type of person who wants uh, laser resurfacing separate or a combination, we can do both of those. This patient had a very heavy neck a turkey neck, some people would call it, because of this excess of skin here in the pre-op that you can see. And so we did a facelift for her, but she also had a really ruddy skin, sunburned skin, and we did a laser resurfacing to improve that really ruddy nature and help with the skin texture. So you can see here that we did the combination of a facelift and CO2 laser resurfacing. Uh, our patient here underwent facial fat grafting as well as uh, a facelift and laser resurfacing. Uh, laser resurfacing really helping with these really fine wrinkles of the face. You can see here she's still recovering from, from the laser, but you can see her improvement in that skin texture 
in all those little wrinkles around the mouth, the little wrinkles around the eyes and around the cheeks, but we also added facial fat grafting. So some people uh, really want to add volume, but they don't want to keep doing fillers. So we can do facial fat grafting to increase volume of the face. So we can see here with this result that we're doing all of that. We also did some uh, fat transposition where we move some of the fat from the eyelids down to the cheek in combination of adding fat to the cheek. And so we can get a very nice result um, when we combine these procedures. But so, you know, there are, there are other patients that I visit with and they really don't want to undergo a face, for example. And, and what can be done uh, without undergoing a facelift? Well, we can do a combination of treatments uh, with, that doesn't involve surgery. So there are non-surgical options. Some of these non-surgical options include uh, laser resurfacing. So there's a patient that underwent full face CO2 laser resurfacing. And at the same time, we added Sculptra. Sculptra is a filler. I consider Sculptra a biostimulant of collagen. And so when you have a biostimulant of collagen like Sculptra, what you're doing is you're adding sculpture to the face and it's almost seeding the face. So it puts little seeds in the face and these little seeds, what they do is that they go forth and they plump the face and they add volume to the face. Uh, and so there's a couple of approaches here. We can combine sculpture with a laser or we could do sculpture separately. So if you want volume of the face and you want a natural volumization of the face, Sculpture alone may be indicated. With Sculpture, it requires three to four sessions. Typically with Sculpture, because we're adding Sculpture to the face, your body's gonna respond by producing more collagen. Sculpture is a biostimulant of collagen. It's made out of polylactic acid, for those that wanna know. Your body will dissolve it and in its place, uh, produce collagen and produce kind of, when I showed at the beginning of the presentation, that really colorful uh, seed of, of, of tissue, it's going to really give you that, that, that colorful garden with all the pyrosebaceous units and collagen and hyaluronic acid. Now, some patients want also improvement in their wrinkles. And so this patient, we combine a CO2 laser with Sculptra. The CO2 laser allows us to seed the Sculptra very very uh, definitively because it's going to give you give us a little channel and then we place the sculpture topically and this is a way to um, this is a way to add volume slowly to the face so that you don't have an overfilled face so we have a question that came in and that is how often do you have to redo this process that's a great question the way I think about uh, facial rejuvenation is this way think about going to a nice restaurant and some people just want to go for appetizers. And so when you go for appetizers, you can have a lot of appetizers. You can have, for example, tapas, right? I love tapas. Or I love going to a sushi restaurant or ordering a bunch of, a bunch of rolls, like, you know, sushi, you know, sashimi rolls, or we'll do some salmon rolls, you know. But that's not going to fill me for long. It's going to fill me for a little while, and I crave it. So every two to three months, I love going out for sushi. Uh, but it's not going to fill me for a long time. That is your Botox, your Dysport, your fillers. You're going to get filled for a little while. It's going to help with some of the wrinkling of your face. It's going to fill you for a little while. Even Sculptra. Sculptra is going to give you, you're going to be filled with Sculptra for a good year, and your body's going to start to degrade the Sculptra. And with Sculptra, you just need a little touch. Um, you know, one small appetizer a year, two small vials of Sculptra a year, and you're refilled. And so you can have six sessions of Sculptra for, or six vials of Sculptra over a year, and then maintain that Sculptra with one or two vials. And so you don't have to redo the entire process. Uh, you just are filled with appetizers. Other people need a full meal. They're hungry. They haven't done anything for 50 years. And so they need a, you know, they need a, a facelift. They need a neck lift. They need their brows lifted. They need their eyelids done. And so a facelift, a deep plane facelift is going to last seven years. Some people can last longer. Some people a little bit shorter. It depends on how neglected your garden is. So that's the other analogy I like to use. We all have a very fruitful, beautiful, colorful garden like I showed you in your skin. If you neglect your garden, it dries up. You don't do good skin care. 
you have to re-fertilize the garden, add different seeds like Sculptra, re-till the garden, get a facelift. You, you may have to uh, add nutrients to the garden, get, a good, get good skin care, good hyaluronic acid. You may need to protect the garden from the sun, uh, use an antioxidant for the UV damage and a good sunblock. And so if you take care of your garden, you take care of your skin, you're going to need less work later on. If you do Botox early, do fillers early, you're going to need less of that early on. But once the garden is scorched and you've lost a lot of that, uh, of the nutrient, you want to revitalize and rejuvenate. This patient here did not want a facelift. She didn't want her garden tilled. So instead, what we did was we rejuvenated the face by doing laser resurfacing. Uh, that a lot and sculpture at the same time, we seeded the garden and look at the results. The results are volume, the results are less wrinkles, and the results are improvement in skin texture and some of these brown spots, these scorched areas are improved. Now it's not a facelift, right? But you can see improvement in skin texture, improvement in volume, and she was happy with that. And so everybody needs, needs everybody comes in with different desire. Some people are ready to have their garden retilled re and, and fertilized. Other people are ready for that big meal um, and they're ready for uh, a big change. Uh, other people are not. Now, another patient, uh, you know, is asking me, well, what about after a facelift? What do I have to do after a facelift to maintain these results? Think about that. It's like dessert, right? So you've had your facelift, you've had your full meal, you've been doing appetizers for a long time. Now you want the sweetness, right? Dessert. You want to maintain your results. So how do you maintain your results? You maintain your results with some Botox. You maintain your result with an occasional filler and your results will last longer. So you want to protect your investment. You want to stay satisfied for a long period of time. Our, our patient here underwent a rhinoplasty and a full facelift. The facelift was to add volume. So people ask, how does a facelift add volume? Well, we're elevating the cheeks. Some patients may ask, well, listen, I, I really don't see that this patient really needed a facelift. Uh, and everybody's a little bit different, right? Some of this extra skin and jowling and hanging uh, can be improved. You can see that the patient when her chin is looking down, there's ex excess, ex excess skin, there's deep-seated wrinkles. And so we're improving that neckline, we're improving the jawline, we're adding volume to the mid face, and that's what a facelift can do for you, is, is do all those things uh, to improve your facial volume and improve uh, the, the results. So here's an example of a patient that is an avid cyclist, uh, wife of one of my friends who has deep-seated wrinkles and really a lot of freckling. This is South Texas sun. This is what can happen to someone who's very fair. Uh, so you want to enjoy the outdoors, but if you don't protect your skin with a good sunblock, if you don't use an antioxidant, we recommend CE Ferulic, which is the top antioxidant in the world. If you're not protecting your skin, um, then what can happen is you can get a lot of freckling and deep-seated wrinkles. And we can reverse those changes, but it's likely going to re require some resurfacing of the skin. Uh, and so this patient ended up receiving CO2 laser resurfacing. We also did a facelift for this patient. You can see here that uh, we really took away a lot of that sun damage in her face and neck uh, region. And so uh, the laser in combination with the CO2, uh, excuse me, the laser CO2 in combination with the facelift can give you a powerful result. You can see the results of the neckline, uh, the results of the jowls. Uh, improvement in the neckline and the jowls. You can also see improvement in the skin texture. You see that the scar is very well hidden. And these are the kind of results that we can get with a combination therapy. So just because you've had a lot of sun damage and the garden has been um, sort of not looked after, doesn't mean you could, we can't get some rejuvenation back. Obviously, we're not going to look like we did when we were 20, but we want to look our best age-appropriate self. So that's important, is to look your best age-appropriate self. So, uh, all right, so great. Uh, another question that just came in is, um, what are the pros and cons of a Kybella versus chin liposuction? Is there a laser for skin tightening if you opt uh, for one of those? So let's talk about that a little bit. Let me, let me show you this question here um, that here. 
Great. Uh, so yes, there are pros and cons to Kybella versus chin liposuction. Uh, thank you, Jessica, for that question. So chin liposuction is a surgical procedure to remove some of the chin uh, fat here. And so it's a small little incision. It can be done in the clinic or it can be done in the office. And so one of the advantages of chin liposuction is that it is a small procedure. Um, and so, uh, and the, let me see if I do this. Okay, great, now we can see uh, just me instead of all those windows. So chin liposuction is, is something that with a little bit of local, which is a little anesthetic, uh, we can remove the fat. Now the fat that we're removing is superficial fat. So what I mean by superficial fat is fat above the muscle of the neck. And so some patients have deep fat and that deep fat can be removed with a neck lift. And so it depends on how far along in the process you are. Someone in their 20s, 30s may benefit from chin liposuction. Someone in their 40s and 50s because of aging may have more jowling, more skin sag, more fat in the deep tissues, they may benefit from a neck lift in combination with a facelift sometimes. So can lasers can laser uh, give you skin tightening? Laser can give you skin tightening, but not fat removal. So some patients have uh, excess laxity of skin, so too much skin. If you have too much skin, that has to be removed through a facelift. If the skin is weathered from sun or has light wrinkles, you can have laser resurfacing for the skin. If there's too much skin, we have to remove it. If it's weathered, we can resurface. If you have too much fat underneath, a double chin, then we can do chin liposuction. What about if you want to not do surgery? Uh, we can do Kybella. Let's talk about Kybella. Kybella is deoxycholic acid. Deoxycholic acid, your body produces. It's in, it's in the pancreas. Your pancreas um, secretes the oxycholic acid to, uh, to remove fat and melt fat away. And so if you want fat melting uh, in your chin, we can inject this the oxycholic acid or Kybella. Kybella does require multiple sessions, four to five sessions. It's typically done in a kit. So one kit has one vial uh, that is good for one session and each kit comes with four vials. So. Uh, one kit, you may, if you purchase a kit, you may, you're purchasing four sessions. You need all four sessions because one, two, one vial is not going to do it for you. Uh, so if you don't want surgery and you can come in once a month, Kybella may be a good option for you uh, versus chin liposuction. The cost is the same. Whether you do liposuction or Kybella, you're going to run into about the same cost. So. Uh, thank you, Jessica, for uh, commenting on uh, our patient who's a cyclist. She does look uh, fantastic, and she looks much younger, and she's back to cycling. Just because you have laser resurfacing or facelift work done or another procedure doesn't mean that you don't live life, right? You can still go back to living life. You just have to protect your skin with a good skin blocker, titanium and zinc sun blocker. We recommend SkinCeuticals and Sente. Elta MD is also good. There's several products out there that are really good. Um, I'm not a fan of something over the counter because it doesn't block UVA and UVB. If you're a cyclist, you're outdoors, you want to block both UVA and UVB because they're both damaging to the skin. So uh, Tammy asks, is seafood like okay to wear during the day if I use 50 SPF? The answer is yes. What I would do is, um, is layer C ferulic with, with other things. So you may start the morning, morning with a gentle washer, like a gentle cleanser, to take out some of, some of the oil. Then apply the C ferulic. The C ferulic is an antioxidant. So we we're talking about UV damage. So UV rays come in and they damage the skin. They cause oxidative stress. And so the oxidative stress is going to cause oxygen cells to convert to O3 and that oxidative stress hurts your cells. You lose volume in, in the skin and begin to age as a result of that garden getting shriveled up. So think about the oxidative stress from the sun, just like your garden is gonna shrivel up your garden. It's gonna take away the hydration. So now you wanna wash the garden, right? You want to add a serum like C ferulic initially because then this is an antioxidant. It's gonna work on the deeper levels to convert that oxidative stress and neutralize the stress inside your skin. Then you want to hydrate. 
right? So you want to add something that is going to be uh, hydration for the skin that penetrates the skin. The dermal repair works well. The, the skin suticles, uh, B5 works great. Um, the AGE intensifier for dry skin works super. It's a glycolipid. It's, so it, it adds hydration. It penetrates the skin. Uh, so those are all great options for you. And then you want to put your sunblock on. Something with uh, SPF 50 is great, but most importantly is a UVA and UVB blocker. Now let's talk about SPF. SPF means sun protection factor, which means that in 50% of people with fair skin, you'll burn after 50 minutes. So you wanna reapply if you have fair skin uh, every 50 minutes with an SPF 50, but that doesn't mean you're blocking all the damage. So that's why you need UVA and UVB. When you look at your iPhone, you're getting UVB rays in, and that's also damaging. So, uh, so you want to be able to uh, and block those UV rays. All right, great. Uh, Tammy commented, I use Cferulic and Image 50 physical and chemical block. That's perfect. When, uh, so physical blocker is something that blocks the physical rays coming in, UVA and UVB. Chemical blocker is something that stays on your skin chemically. And so if you jump in the pool or you or it's easy to wash off, you sweat, it, it can wash off. It's not as good of a UVB blocker, UVA blocker doesn't block all the UVB. So physical defense blocker is really what you need. Great. Um, so we are uh, getting close uh, uh, to ending this session in about uh, seven minutes. I want to answer any other questions you have. We can also go back to uh, talking about some more cases uh, in this time. So uh, any other questions that, that you might have out there? Um, this video is going to be recorded on YouTube. I apologize for the, for the technical difficulties up front. We were able to resolve that, which I appreciate your patience. You can reach us. You can email us at admin at drjoseberrera.com. A-D-M-I-N at D-R-J-O-S-E Barrera.com. You can also call us at 210-468-5426 or follow me on Instagram at drjoseberrera.com. Okay, uh, question came in, where do we get these products? So uh, any dermatologist that focuses on cosmetic or any facial plastic surgeon that focuses on cosmetics usually has a skincare line. We like SkinCeuticals because it is backed by science as a paper behind uh, just about most of every single product on SkinCeuticals line. So when I talk about C. ferulic, we can tell you about papers, how C. ferulic decreases some of the redness with laser resurfacing and the antioxidant effects of C. ferulic. When we talk about um, hyaluronic acid uh, in some of these products, we talk about how they penetrate the stratum corneum, the outer layer of the skin, and gets inside your skin. Um, so I think that these are all great options for you. Uh, SkinCeuticals is a great line. Uh, Sensei is another great line that we recommend. There are a lot of great lines out there. Part of this is that uh, establishing a regimen with your physician so that you can stay on top of the regimen because these are medical grade products. I'll give you an example. Uh, for acne patients, we place patients on an LHA cleanser and toner and then salicylic acid. Um, topical because that works for acne. And so we may also combine it with some laser resurfacing to improve acne scarring. And so, but the, every patient has a different tailored approach. And so uh, the tailored approach really has to do uh, with the patient needs. So you, some patients may come in with wanting improvement in the wrinkles, uh, but other patients are like, no, I like my crow's feet. You know, I, I just want you to work my acne scarring. And so we just need to see you in the clinic and, and make an appointment for consultation. And then we can um, best, best assist you with, with some of these, um, some of your questions and concerns. So uh, it's been a great webinar. Um, I really appreciate all you guys joining us. Um, thank you so much. Uh, if there are any other questions, you can go ahead and DM me on Instagram at drjoseberrera.com. You can also reach me by email at um, admin at drjoseberrera.com and feel free to visit us here in San Antonio, Texas. Thank you very much and uh, we'll see you next time.